Hey everybody, welcome to Paper Old and New. Um, in the spirit of 12 by 12 paper usage, um, I've seen several videos um, out there where people are going through and just taking their stash and making pages, just to have stored pages, um, like, actually I guess these would be folios that you could sew into a book or add to a signature. Um, and of course you can always take a 12 by 12 piece of paper, fold up three inches of it, make a pocket and get a six by nine page. When you fold it in half, you get a six by nine page for a six by nine signature. Now, obviously if I wanted to, I could cut two inches off the top and an inch off the side to make this five by seven and it would still work. Okay. Um, just doing this, I lose nothing. I cut nothing. Um, and I've used an entire piece of 12 by 12 paper. Now there's all kinds of things you can do back here on the back. Uh, you can line it. I have had success and I can't find my sample. I've had success putting, hmm, I can't find it guys. I wanted to show it to you. I can't find it. I'm always losing things. Um, but I basically took, um, some of that, uh, polyacrylic solution that I showed you guys before, um, and some tissue paper and covered the entire back, the white back of a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And then you could take it and make the page out of it and the back would be covered for you. Or you could take it and you could cover, like, for example, I could take some coffee dyed paper and I could put it on either side here. Um, maybe on either side of the fold so that I'm not adding any bulk to that middle. And then I could cover the back with coffee dyed paper, right? Um, and then again, I'm getting rid of that white on the back. Okay. So that's a very simple one. And obviously we've all, you know, done this to make pockets. You just glue it down. Um, and a lot of times I've seen people cut this piece out of the middle here, this piece with the fold so that again, you don't get that extra bulk. And you can do that too. Um, now I have a whole stack of these here that I have taken that are 12 by 12 pieces of paper and I've either folded them and folded this way or I've and made the inside or I've done like we did here where I folded it and then you open it up and there's a pocket here. Um, and I'm pretty sure I got them all to nine inches. Uh, if you ever fold it and you miss the three inch mark, uh, you're too short. Say you make your pocket too shallow. You can always cut the top off. I mean, if you cut a strip off the top, tis what it is. Okay. Now the other thing I have seen, um, I, I I've done this fold. So I fold the page in half like you normally would. And instead of folding up the three inches, I cut the three inches off. Okay. So somewhere around here, probably in my scrap box, I've got a bunch of three inch cutoffs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So it's nine inches high. And then I've taken it to make an angular pocket. I've folded this down to the mid fold. Okay, so if I was to take this piece of paper and fold it in half like this so that I have my six by nine piece of paper, this triangle is this, and I folded it to the midline. Okay, make sense? We're good so far? Um, I can, I will do this with a piece of paper in just a second, but I just wanted to show you. So you fold it to the midline and then with your other piece, you cut it in half. Okay. So I cut three inches off the side. So I cut three inches off the top and I cut three inches off the side. Right. Make sense. Let's try one and I'll show you. And then we can mess around with the ones I've already done. Okay. Wait, this one's already cut, so let's do this one. Uh, I don't know how much it's cut. You would take three inches off of one side, turn it 90 degrees, and take three inches off of another side. My first cut is not going to be three inches because this page has already gotten cut once. I don't know. There's a strip missing here. So we're going to cut this nine inches. Okay. 
I really need to get my table cleaned up and I get my big trimmer down here, but I keep trying, guys. I really do. Okay, don't get rid of your strips. You can always find a use for strips. Okay, and then we're going to take it and we're going to cut... three inches off the other side. Turned it 90 degrees and I'm gonna cut three inches off one of the sides. One, two, three, here. This gives us a nine by nine square. That's what you're going for, a nine by nine square. Okay. Actually, before you make it a nine by nine square, fold it in half just so that you have the fold line at the six inch mark, because that's where you want it to be. So before I cut it, fold it in half. Now we're gonna take three inches off the side. I should have folded it in half to begin with, but I forgot. Okay. And we're gonna take three inches off. Don't throw away your strips. All right, now, basically what we do is we flip this over, and this time my, my flap is on this side, but you're gonna take this corner and you're gonna fold it down until you're lined up along what you had as your fold line. Which with overhead lighting, I can't see anymore because overhead lighting fills the fold line in. Okay, so I have something that looks like that, all right? And at the fold line, this folds around like this, and I have like that. Except this one goes the other way. All right, let's do it again, and we'll try and make this one go the opposite direction so that I have a pair. And I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, let's fold it in half first. So I remember the steps in order this time. We need that center fold to do this. This is not lining up. I'm gonna line up the bottom. I don't trust the top. That's where the salvage edge came off. So we'll just line up the bottom and uh, see there. Me talking. None of it lined up. It's really weird, actually. This piece of paper has not been cut or messed with, and it is not straight. <laughs> Isn't that nice to know? Okay. We'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, so on the tall side, we're going to take three inches off the top. Well, about three inches. It, this looks like it's a little over 12, so we're taking off. We're making this nine inches tall. I'm trying to my glasses are playing tricks on me okay all right so we have that don't throw your strips away <laughs> and I'm gonna keep saying it okay now this time I'm gonna lay it out and I'm gonna take my three inches off the other side And I fold, I didn't fold that the way I wanted to, so. Because I, I wanted the tuck to have the edge. And I suppose I could just refold it, but I cut it already. <laughs> so the tuck isn't going to have the edge. It's whatever. This is what happens when I'm not paying attention. I, what, I, I've, I'm too many steps ahead in my brain on what I'm doing, and... I lose track and then I don't do things the way I want to. And then I do one of those forehead smacks and I say, ah, you're supposed to cut that on the other side. Or you were supposed to fold that the other way. Okay. Now, uh, move over here. Keep everything where I can find it. All right, and we're going to do it again. So this time we're going this way and we're going to fold this down. just to the fold line. 
right? And then this folds over. So now you have a pair. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute. So we'll take this. I paired these two up. They aren't the same exact pattern. You don't always have to use the same exact pattern, but you need to make sure that they go with whatever 12 by 12 folded pocket page that you chose. So basically what we do is we take this, take your, unfold your flap and tuck this down in here. Okay. So this tucks inside the pocket like that. Okay, you with me so far? All right, and then you're gonna do the same thing with the other one. You're gonna tuck it inside the pocket like that. We all good? Okay, and then you're gonna fold it well. It does fold, I promise. They fit. I just had this folded a second ago. Now it's being obnoxious. Okay, you're gonna fold it like that and then you're gonna fold the tuck over like this. So on the outside of the page, you get a tuck and in here, you get a slant pocket and then a regular pocket. Everybody? Okay, now for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one wants to be a. Well, well, I mean. So now that we have this all like this, let's go ahead and. There we go. I knew it fit. Uh, we can glue this together, right? Um, and then you can do whatever you want to decorate this. What's nice about this particular piece of paper is it's a piece of cardstock and it's got some indented circles. So if I wanted to, I could probably take some ink. Let's try it. See what happens. Um, let me get one of my big brushes and actually not that big brush. Let's use this big brush. I don't suppose it matters, but we'll use this one and crackling campfire. And we're going to just see what happens if I lightly go over this. It has, um, so like on this side, these circles are raised. So on this side, there's an indent. So obviously this won't work on all your paper, but it should be fun to try on this. Ooh, I was about to ink my, I don't want to ink, get ink on my mat. We're going to have to do this a little at a time. I don't know. Can you see the circles? Are they showing up any better? I don't know if they are. I mean, I like the orange. It's cool in here, but Okay, so that gets that. Um, so there's an idea if you don't want to like glue more paper in here. And of course, if you do glue more paper in here, you could make another, you could create another pocket between whatever you line this with and your cardstock. But let's open this out and we're going to start gluing down our pockets. So this one's going to go right up to the seam. So we need to put actually what we need to do is glue this flap down. And I am gonna keep the flap and glue it down because I wanna use, I want it for reinforcement of the pocket. So we're going to I'm 
we're just gonna glue that right down there like that. Okay, and then we're gonna glue along the side, along the bottom. And just for a little extra oomph, I'm going to put a bead of glue along this, this edge here. Okay. And we're going to glue this down inside here. Right along all of our folds. Right? I'm trying not to put it anywhere where it's going to impede a, a crease. Okay, I also don't want to make a mess on my cutting mat, so... Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go along the edges of this. I'm using the art glitter glue just because this is just pa this piece here that I'm doing now is just paper. Okay, and we're going to fold that down like that. Okay, so we have a tuck. And for some reason, it's wanting to bubble. There we go. I don't know why it's doing that. But there, that's flat. And that's flat. See there? And then it's in there, and now you have a pocket and a tuck. Okay? And then we're going to take this piece as cardstock. So I'm going to use Faber Tac. I lost the pin for my art glitter glue. I don't want the tips to get clogged while I'm not using them. So. I've learned my lesson on the tip clogging thing. Uh, actually, the first thing I want to do is I am going to trim right in here. Now, assuming that this gets sewn into a signature, you're not even going to know that anything was cut here. Because, I mean, it's, it's gone. It'll get folded in, right? Okay, so I'm going to fold this one down, and then we'll do the other side, and we'll get one done. And then we'll um, see if we can make any more. I'll run through the process with you again. And then maybe I'll show you a couple other ideas. So basically, um, this was just an idea for taking... Uh, combining our idea of using up 12 by 12 paper and um, the idea of pre-prepping signature pages ahead of time to then use as needed in a book or signature or, you know, whatever. All right. Okay. And now we have our pocket here. All right. So it's a double pocket page with a tuck on the back. All right, now let's do the other side. So same thing goes here. We're going to glue this piece down. sure that's creased well. I think I have, I thought I had a bone folder down here. In fact, I'm pretty sure, yeah, there it is. Okay. I was like, what am I hitting? <laughs> I was hitting the, 
Okay, so that's down. Now, again, we're going to go down this side. And this whole idea of having, like, pre-made signatures with all kinds of eclectic papers and, you know, book pages and, you know, whatever you find that you really like to put in your journals, that, that whole idea of that, I, I like it. I think it's... Um, a really good way to pre-prep. And then when you're making journals, the process is, you know, that much. It's kind of like having pre-made ephemera. Same idea, right? You have pre-made pages and you just kind of pull pages um, or pre-made signatures. Um, I know that I've seen some kind of, uh, they call them eclectic journals. I don't know why that's showing through there like that, but it is. They call them eclectic journals, and basically eclectic is, uh, you know, variety of different stuff. It's nothing, um, no theme necessarily. So you're just throwing together a bunch of stuff that you think looks neat together. And that one page doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with the page before it or after it. It's just... An eclectic collection of things that you like, that you thought went nice together in a book. And I like the idea of that. I think that's a neat idea. Um, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like what collage is. So you're making a whole book that's basically just one big collage of stuff that doesn't necessarily go together anywhere else except in that book. Uh, okay. And that makes that one. Okay. Now, so that's a done folio. We've got a tuck here. We open it up and we've got two slanted pockets and two bottom pockets. And then when you close it this way, you've got another tuck here. Okay. So sorry about that. My puppy is sick. She's throwing up. Anyway. Um, she's actually not a puppy anymore. She's, I think she'll be six this August. But she's a puppy at heart. She still loves to play fetch and she's blind as a bat. Okay, anyway, so now I have a whole stack of these, like I said, that I've turned into the, I've taken the 12 by 12 and folded up three inches to make a pocket. Okay, now the same way that I've turned this one inside out, right? You could turn these the other way around and put them on the outside. So if I wanted to, I could flip this around, put this together the way we did the last one. Now these ones are just paper. So it's paper on paper. There's no um, cardstock here for this one. And these ones appear to be, I might have to trim them. They don't appear to be lining up. So I might have to trim it a little bit. How tall is that? I'm just going to take a hair off. It seems to be offsetting a little bit. 
Now we're going to do another one of these pages where, except for this time, the pockets are going to be on the outside of the page instead of on the inside of the page. And this is folded funny, which might account for the fact that things weren't lining up properly. Be nice if I could fold straight. That'd be cool. Okay. So we're going to open this back out. And again, we're tucking this in here. up to the seam, up to the, up to the fold lines. Okay. Like that. And again, you're going to have white. So however you want to address your bright white page. Um, so let's fold, let's glue down the triangle flap. Okay. I put too much glue onto that corner. <laughs> the only reason I grabbed my rag to press that down. I know I put too much glue onto that corner. Okay. And then we're going to do our edges again. Okay, so we fold, so we get this in here. And like I said, I don't get it right up to the line. I kind of put it just a little to the side so that it doesn't interfere with the fold. I don't want it to interfere with the fold. That might interfere with the tuck fold though. Oh, peachy. See, I refolded it and now I didn't need to cut that piece off. So now I have an extra of an excess. I'm going to have to refold that. I just want it to come around the page. I don't want it to fold the yellow piece, which is what it's trying to do now. Let me get my bone folder, which I keep hiding from myself. Okay, I think we got that okay. We made a little bit of a mess, but lesson learned. Hopefully the refold, I won't have to trim the other one. does look like I'm going to have to trim a little off the top, though. So I'm gluing down a little away from the top. Ooh, I hope I glued that low enough. For some reason now it's too tall. So we're going to trim. This one's all messed up. Sorry, it's a little bit tall, so we're just going to trim that off the top. No harm done, unless of course you cut into your page and then you end up having to fix it because I can't cut a straight line. Oh, I'm making a mess of this one, guys. I should just quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> okay. So then you would fold this up this way and you would get your pocket on the outside and your tuck on the inside. OK, 
Okay, so let's glue this one down. All right, I know I'm back down at the bottom of my board again. <laughs> Seriously. Ooh, you know what? They're connected. I probably shouldn't glue that down yet. I haven't separated them or... Okay. Um, I, there's another idea I want to show you, so I want to, um, but you get the idea for this. So you can do this on the inside so that the angle pocket is on the outside of your page. So you get your angle pocket here and you get your other pocket here. And then when you open it up, the tucks are on the inside. Now, I suppose if you really wanted to, you could make it so that your tuck, like if I wanted to put an angled page in this way, I could put the angle on the inside like this with nothing covering this bottom part. And then I guess you could put the tuck catching. You could put the tuck inside there like that and then you would get a tuck with a pocket in front of it. Um, I mean, there's nothing that says you can't do that. Uh, I just like the angled pocket inside the other pocket better. But just my preference. So anyway, so that was those. Um, and we may come back and finish this one if I get... Because I have a couple more of these pairs of pockets that need pages to go on. So that's what I was doing. And the other thing I wanted to show you, though, was this idea for these. So this idea is... Oh, I doubled that one. Huh. Wait, let me show you the simple version first. Um, okay, <laughs> I say simple version, look what I did. Okay, so this is that polka dot stripe paper that you may recognize from the project we just did. Basically what I've done is I've taken a piece of 12 by 12 paper and I folded it diagonally so that the corners meet, right? I mean, we've done this for other things, not a new concept, right? Okay, and then I took, this is a piece of cardstock that I really like. This happens to be a piece of paper that you just saw that I paired with these polka dots for another project. And um, I thought it would make a good lining for the inside so that I don't have any white to deal with necessarily. You, of course, do not have to do that. You can line the back of your white paper however you want. I am going to go ahead and cut. Did I not fold this? I did not fold this in half. I'm not really sure how I missed half, but I did. Now, can you see those tears? Can you see that? This is some of that paper with it. these little flowers have glitter all over them. So they have a tendency to peel away. This paper peels. And I had to correct a fold, so it wasn't happy with me. So we're going to fold that, and we're going to make it... It's still not right, but we'll deal with what we got. Uh, we're going to make it 9 inches tall, because that's a good journal size. It seems to be a popular page height or book height, or whatever. Well, if I could line this up properly. Which is diff- I'm going to use the fold line. Which is difficult because I didn't cut it- I mean, it's not folded exactly straight, so it's- <sighs> So we want it 9 inches, so we're going to cut it at the 16 mark, because I've got this down at the 7. If it could just not move, that would be great. Put this here and cut this off.
is if I have to tell you, but you know, save your strips. Okay, so now we have our nine inch by six inch page, right? Please tell me I got that right. Yes. Okay, now what we're going to do with our triangle, fold it in half this way. So basically you folded it in quarters, but triangularly. Okay, and you're going to take it and you're going to, well, I have a liner page, so we're going to make sure, you're going to open it back up and you're going to tuck this down inside here and fold it up so that it meets your fold. And then you have slant pockets inside and out, okay, right, just like that. like that. And you have a choice here. You can either cut these off and save them to do something else with. Because if you cut them off and you open them up, I think they'll, they should still be triangles. So you could make corners with them. Um, or you can fold them over the edge of your page like so and make a little tuck there. So those are your two options there. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and finish this off. I need, sorry guys, I had to get something to glue on if I'm going to do something this big. All right, let's give this a shot. Um... See, I already went off the page. Okay. I'm gonna try and line it up one way and then the other. I don't know how well that's gonna work, but I'm hoping. I mean, some of it's going to get covered up, but I don't want it to be too off. I say as I put that down and it's way off over there. Okay, I'm just going to fold that. It's not really hanging out the edges, so... I'm gonna try creasing this. So it's wanting to fold. It's wanting to fold out. I'm gonna try and push it in with my bone folder and hope that that. Gets rid of any weird fold. Okay. Now we're gonna recrease it out here. And I'm just tearing up blue pieces left and right. Okay, so that's that, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this, put it in here, and of course we only want to glue down edges because So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is we're going to do inside then outside. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to line it up just inside the crease, hopefully. Okay. 
Okay, and we're going to put glue along our edges. So I'm going to put one along the bottom, some glue along the bottom, even though this wraps around the bottom of the page. That is such a wobbly line of glue. I'm going to go up this side and up this side. And then I am going to go up either side of the middle. Okay, with the idea that this is getting stitched into a signature, I just don't want to fight with the glue in the middle. Okay. On the bottom. Okay, now this side is glued down. All the way around, and we have pockets. So we have a pocket here. Well, we do have a pocket, guys, I swear. Pocket there, and a pocket there. They're tight. I mean, they're loose once you get in them, but they're right up against the page because they're paper on paper. So it's a very thin edge. Okay, now we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing. Unfold it. And run a bead of glue. right along the bottom. Up to the end. Up to the end. And up either side of the middle. I'm big on reinforcement. I know that's going to get sewn in, but it just makes me feel better. The nice thing about this is, remember I was telling you this, this paper, it peels because of the glitter and all that. This covers up all those peels. <laughs> this pocket covers up all my peels on the spine of this page. Okay, and now we have pockets on the outside. Now this folds. Behave. Uh-oh, we got a wrinkle. Oh, it's wrinkling when I fold it, but it's not wrinkling at the seam. It's wrinkling at a weird spot on the page. Okay. See that? Can you see that wrinkle there? All right, what I might do is let this dry and then force it folded. Okay, so then what, the last thing we need to do is cut, huh, I can't see the edge. I have to feel for it. Okay, so we cut that edge off. Make sure we didn't cut our glue. It's still closed, it is. And we get this little triangle, which is a right triangle and you can use somewhere at another time, although it does have a crease in it. You may want to back this. Well, this particular one, because it's it's just paper. This isn't any kind of, maybe if I give myself an idea of where it is. Okay. And there we have another one. Uh-oh, I cut into the glue. Is that one still stuck together? Oh, that's okay. All right, so there you have, you've got pockets on the inside and then pockets on the outside of this page. And I'm gonna try and fold it again, guys, but I'm not making any promises. I keep trying to, maybe if I score it. It'll cooperate. I should probably use my scoreboard, but you know what? It's upstairs, so. Mm. 
there you have it. And it's a little uneven on this side, but um, that would be something I would clean up after I stick it in a in a signature and I see where the, all the signature pages sit. And then I can clean up all the edges together. Um, but so there's another idea. And this particular one used up three pieces of 12 by 12 paper to make this page. Um, my other thought for this was if you take, this actually has two, okay? So if you take a piece of 12 by 12 paper and you fold it in half and then you make your triangle, you take a piece of 12 by 12 paper and you fold it in half diagonally like you did before and then in half diagonally again to get your center. With this one, what I did was I took out this, this is this same piece of paper. I took this outer frame off. That outer frame is, hold on. Actually, I don't need to do that. The outer frame is an inch and a half. So I made it a 10 and a half inch square. I suppose I could have just measured the square. I did not make it a 10 and a half inch square. Oh no, because I took and I, I took three inches off. Oh, so we just came back down to a nine inch square? No. One and a half off each side should have made a nine inch square. All right, that frame, uh, my ruler lied. It's a little over eight and a half inches. So it's an eight and a half inch square. Now you can make this square, the second square, whatever size you want, just so long as it's smaller than your 12 by 12. And you want to make sure that um, you could measure it based on how much space you want between your pocket and this frame or, or this top. So how much space do you want between your pockets? This one's kind of hidden because it blends in because it's the same paper. Actually, I think I took, yeah, I don't know. Um, so this makes a double slant pocket on the outside of your page. So if we put this in here, and you obviously don't have to use papers that blend this well. I just thought it was kind of neat. It's almost like a hidden extra pocket because obviously you can see this pocket, but you don't know this pocket is here because it blends in with the paper. So my son's playing video games in the next room. Um, so that, and then you get your extra pocket here and your extra pocket here. Same premise as the one we just did. Um, but this video is getting up there, so I'm going to call it quits, but I thought this would be, um, some fun ideas for uses of 12 by 12 paper to make pages, to, to make pre-made pages for signatures. I got these ideas from Dear Julie Julie, I'm pretty sure. I will go back in my video history and try and find the video where she did these. I think she did more, a couple more variations, but these were two of my favorites. So, um, and I don't think she did this combination. I think she made these fold up pages and these separately, I think, I'm not sure. Um, but the idea was inspired by Dear Julie Julie, and I'll try and link the video that inspired me for these. And I hope you liked this idea for making signature pages and using up, again, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. So um, yeah, I will see you guys with the next 12 by 12 idea. Bye-bye.